Fuegos, worldwide fans of the planet's hottest entertainment with an edge. Fuego here, and I welcome you once again to Fuego Tainment, namesake program of mine. And we are talking another Rapido Fuego review coming to America, but this is going to be a little bit of a different format because I am going to basically compare and contrast this new 2021 sequel with the original 1988 classic. Now, that 88 film, which was directed by John Landis, was in my estimation, a pretty hard R from, uh, you know, uh, uh, just uh, ladies showing off their goodies in uh, this fictional country of uh, Eddie Murphy's character where he is a prince uh, to James Earl Jones and uh, has to, well, he doesn't have to, he basically is being forced into a arranged marriage, not really feeling that, and uh, he decides to go to America with Arsenio Hall, of all peeps, woo, 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 so that he can uh, find and basically, hopefully, connect with somebody on a personal level and actually fall in love as opposed to just, you know, hey, this person is who we have designated you to be with, no buts about it. And so that film was, uh, besides that aforementioned nudity, it, it basically captured that late 80s New York and all of its inherent vulgarity, you know? I mean, there is very off-color humor throughout. There is F-bombs all over the place, like most notably when Eddie's character is really just starting to fall in love. To be loved, to be loved. Yeah, and he's like marching around the street and everybody's like, shut the fuck up, and just, I mean, it's a pretty profane film, and that's one of the biggest differences between that and this coming to America, directed by Craig Brewer. It's PG-13, and I must say that um, it's it's got to be a tough situation when you decide you're going to make a comedic sequel all these years later. And I, I must admit, I did like this movie, but I most definitely didn't love it. There's a term that my... Uh, my co-host on the horror show, Cecil Laird, shout out to him, that throws out that he coined it, or at least to the best of my knowledge, it's called a rebequel. And it's basically a sequel that is also like a soft reboot, so to speak. And that's exactly what Coming to America is. Uh, if you remember just all the similarities between like Jurassic World and the original film, or uh, Star, uh, boy, Star Wars Force Awakens too is another one. Um, and as far as like comedic stuff goes, like you're basically gonna see a lot of the same beats in Coming to America that you do in the original. And sometimes it works, like like I enjoyed Jurassic World and Force Awakens as well, but um, I don't know. I think one of the, like with uh, Dumb and Dumber 2, you know, and also like the, uh, the Anchorman sequel and even the recent Zombieland sequel, when you make these films all these years later, at least those had the consistency of vulgarity and tone in a lot of ways. That's not to say that this doesn't recapture the tone in a lot of ways because coming to America, like, you can tell that original John Landis film from 88, they spent some Monet on that, especially back in, um, you know, this, this fictional African country uh, between the costuming and set design and everything. They, if anything, they almost upped the ante in this one. The costuming is out of control. The set design is like ridiculously beautiful. But it's, it's just that even though it's, I, I found merit in those aforementioned comedic sequels, you know, the Dumb and Dumber sequel and, you know, Anchorman and stuff like, I enjoyed getting reacquainted with those characters and it was fun to visit them once again. But one of the biggest problems here in coming to America compared to the original is, and th those other comedy sequels I just mentioned did the same damn thing in a lot of ways. It's the recycling of jokes. Like, when you're going back to a lot of the same beats, and once again, it's great to see Eddie and Arsenio reprising some of those roles, especially under makeup. Like, I thought that um, very stereotypical Jewish guy at the, uh, at the uh, barber shop in the original film and uh, also in this one, I thought that was like Eugene Levy. No, 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 no. That was Eddie Murphy in the white face, I guess you would call it. And so he, he plays a myriad of characters. Arsenio plays a few as well, but it's, it's often a telling sign when a sequel is showing footage from its previous film in the sequel. Like, if you need, like, point of reference and to, you know, show them, you know, basically going around to these, uh, these shitty uh, queens, like, you know, post-disco kind of bars trying to floss on ladies and stuff like that. Um, and also in the fact that uh, coming to America basically has the same fish out of water sort of situation, but I guess it 
flips the script and maybe that's one of the reasons why they can get away with the PG-13 rating and I will at least admit that is because the predominance of the film takes place in this fictional African country whereas um, yeah, the previous film, most of it took place in New York, where I, I, and there are constant moments in the 88 film where, you know, Eddie Murphy and Arsenio and, like, some of the other characters, you know, from that country are trying to, like, downplay the vulgarity, and they're like, don't talk like that, and whatever. So, there is a much more sophisticated debonair aspect to Eddie Murphy's home country, uh, his character. And so, yes, I guess that is one of the forgivable things, but some, and, and there's, like, Cameos galore all throughout this. I mean, you've got every everybody from Dikembe Mutombo to uh, Morgan Freeman shows up in it, and then you've got a bunch of like big musical acts. You've got like In Vogue and Salt and Pepper at one particular point, and obviously there is a return of sexual chocolate, which is so. There's there's fun moments, but it does feel like a lot of retread, and I, I must admit didn't like the addition of Leslie Mann and her son, and story wise in this basically. Um, Pretty much everybody from the original film comes back, you know, from Louis Anderson to, uh, to, uh, to Eddie Murphy's love interest, who he married at the end of uh, the original Coming to America. And it's pretty much everybody is back, and uh, there are new characters, and this this bastard from Queens, as they call him, uh, needs to be the heir to Eddie Murphy's throne because of the fact that uh, as James Earl Jones' character, uh, you know, he's about to give up the ghost. He's in the twilight of his life at the beginning of this film. Eddie's character has gone on to have three daughters, and so no male heir to the throne. And I, I will say, this film is at its strongest when it tackles those new ideas, as far as like the sexist nature of the country, how women can't rule, and trying to you know flip the script on that. And also uh, the, the next door, next Doria or next to whatever, basically the neighboring country that has been feuding with Eddie and his father for so very long that the, the addition of Wesley Snipes, who is terrific in, um, uh, boy, uh, my name is Dolomite. He's terrific in this. So some of the new additions actually really work. However, once again, back to Leslie Mann and her son who plays this illegitimate child of Eddie's, I did not particularly care for his character. Um, it was incredibly predictable in some of the stuff that goes down with, uh, you know, the woman who's like helping him, his hairstylist, I guess, is what is what she is over there. And so uh, I, I appreciated the scale, the scope, the amount of money that was spent on this, but it was really just the rehashing, the retreading, and the fact that this did feel more like that rebequel, a soft reboot as far as all of the different beats and you know jokes and stuff that they went back to as opposed to crafting a significant segment of new humor in really making this film its own. They flirted with it a little bit, you know, as I said, with the Snipes character and with uh, with Eddie's uh, daughters and stuff, these these princesses, I guess you would call them. But it it just felt hollow to me in some ways and perhaps if I hadn't eaten, like I revisited the original Coming to America I hadn't watched it in probably over a decade not since I was much much younger and that's always a tough thing because I remember watching Jay and Silent Bob Strike Back on a uh, double feature in theaters right before watching Jay and Silent Bob reboot and so I, I feel like when you see that original film and then you immediately go into a film that is a sequel and that is like just recycling so much of those jokes and humor and stuff like that and plot points too no less um i i feel like i would have been less judgmental if i had just gone right into this uh coming to america as opposed to re-watching the original but i was reminded about how amazingly funny the original is with the soul glow and stuff and i thought that was prince man but no i guess it's not and uh, it's the original is also a very sweet movie and just the genuine nature of its romance and it's I mean I, I was looking on my shelf and I'm like I could have sworn I owned Coming to America I guess I don't so that's another one to add to my myriad of uh, just uh, home video home home video I still say home video I still have some VHS tapes god damn it but um, yes just to add to my home media collection that's one that uh, I definitely need to have it's when Eddie was firing on all cylinders in the 80s um, Trading Places, Harlem Nights, you know, so, so many different things. Uh, 48 Hours, he was so great in the 80s, Beverly Hills Cop. And this is no exception. This is one of, in my estimation, his best films. And while it was nice to get reacquainted with, you know, those characters, like, you know, like Eddie and uh, Sammy and stuff like that, I, I, 
I just could not love this movie, despite the fact that I do feel like it was made with solid intention, and there are some there there are some moments that made me laugh, just like in you know the Dumb and Number Two and the Anchorman sequel and J reboot and uh, you know Zombie Land Double Tap and stuff, but. Unfortunately, as often happens with these comedic sequels, when there is a significant span of time in between the original and uh, you know the follow-up, it just felt kind of uninspired at times and pales in comparison to the original. So, uh, as as f I, I guess I will give this three out of five for coming to America. It's a bueno film, you know, but it is a very very solid three. I wouldn't venture into the three and a half or even creep towards the four for this one. It's definitely not certified Fuego, unfortunately. However, the original, which is also on Amazon Prime currently, so you can double head them just like I did. You can watch Coming to America and Coming to America back to back, but um, yeah, maybe it becomes a little more of a cruel compare and contrast in that regard. So I don't know. Proceed at your own uh, at, at your own uh, you know uh, temperance and stuff like that at, at your own caution. But uh, yeah, man, the original Coming to America, John Landis's uh, 1988 original, definitely four out of five. It is certified Fuego. But this new one is just a three Z. So I've been Jaime in Fuego, and you can find me on all social media sectors: Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, here on the YouTubes, and a like, a share, a subscribe. Greatly appreciated. Yesterday I put up a review of the new Disney film, Raya and the Last Dragon. So uh, yeah, talk about despondent viewing over the course of the weekend. And then later today, I'm going to be putting up a spoilers season review of WandaVision on Disney+. Plus. So check that shizzle out. If you like fantastic stuff, the scarific, jump over to youtube.com slash the horror show channel. Um, new episodes every single day. And I do a weekly Stephen King show called Hail to Stephen King that I'm a big fan of. So I've been Fuego, y'all been Rat Status, and until the real of Ka comes around once more, hasta luego, cinemigos, constant viewers, readers alike, say thank you for a bit of this uh, cinema palaver today. I hope we share more of it sooner rather than later. Till then, hasta luego, peace out.